Hello friends, I'm going to ramble my way through another fun little drawing video. I hope some of you can find something useful out of it. If not, look at the pretty pictures and hopefully you'll enjoy that. This is just a costume design selection where I'm just working on three different, six different, five, I can count, five different variations of costume costume bits for uh, one of my one of my favorite characters. This is Charlie. She's my chief mechanic, um, battlefield type mechanic person. And I'm working in Photoshop, good old Photoshop. So I've already got the line drawings put in for this and the blue halo that you can see around a lot of these drawings are the rough sketch where I just scribbled in the shape of her and her costume. Uh, I did a base layer that was just a rough sketch of her without any clothes on, just a shape of her body, and then drew the costumes over top of them. Uh, I did it with the blue pencil to sketch in the rough shapes of uh, her clothing, and then went on another layer on top of that to draw in the line, the line work over top of that. And right now I'm working on the color layer underneath that line layer. Uh, I probably have the lines set to multiply uh, for the layer type. Um, and I'm just painting underneath the, the black lines to fill in those areas of color. Um, this next part, I put in another layer on top of the color, but below the line drawing. Um, and the blue shape that I'm drawing in is just going to be the shadows that sit on top of that color and modify the color to darken it down for the shaded areas. Um, it's on its own layer that is set to multiply so that the um, so that it will be transparent and not just a uh, blue you know, chunk drawn on top of the colors that I laid on underneath it. So it'll add its layer, uh, add, a, add that blue color to the previously established base colors underneath it. Uh, I will also end up turning down the opacity on that so it's a little bit more, a little lighter, not quite so heavy, solid blue addition to the, to the, uh, to the colors underneath. Um, character designs are just they're just one of my favorite things to do. I really like it. So doing the different iterations, the different types, the different uh, costumes that this character wears at different chapters in her story further along the way. This is one thing you see in TV shows. They'll do like your cartoon shows anyway, where they have one costume for the character and it's all they ever wear. Never, never. They've got one T-shirt. With one design on it, and they only wear, ever wear that. Never change their clothes. Um, anyway, I'm just bitching about nonsense. So, this part you can kind of see the previous uh, stage where I'm, you can see those blue lines a lot better where I just like scribbled in quick and ugly the, uh, the, the, the drawing idea. Um, and now I'm just Again, drawing a cleaner version, uh, not really a clean version, but a cleaner version of those lines over top of the loop. It's on a separate layer so that I don't have to, so if I have to erase anything, I don't lose lose my under, under layer. One of the benefits of working in the computer, help computer, as opposed to paper, is that you can copy, cop, the wonders of copy and paste. So I just stole the, uh, the gun belt from that previous drawing and copied it over top of this one so I don't have to redo the whole thing. A lot of the costume ideas I had, I ended up looking at um, World War One uniforms because this is set in an alternate world where uh, if we were in, if we lived in that alternate world, if that alternate world was our world, uh, this would be set pretty far in the past. Uh, there's some like technology and stuff. We don't have supercomputers or anything, but we do have big steam-powered vehicles. Um, she's we meet this character when she's unhappily working in the trenches of a battlefield. Uh, you see I just did the same thing with her face and copied that from the previous layer. Mm, so I didn't have to redraw the whole thing. Um, this this particular costume, I did, you know, a lot of these, some of these are pretty, pretty fun to, to riff on old historical costumes. Some of them are pretty 
pretty similar to what I saw in looking around for reference material. That dress that she's wearing, that is pretty much a direct uh, copy-paste from a documentary I watched about women's roles in World War I, during the Great War, what women ended up doing in, in France, for example. And a lot of them ended up working in factories because all the dudes were off killing each other. Um, so that costume is it's funny because you'd end up having girls or women wearing a dress while working on a steam locomotive because that's practical. Why not? But this was a long time ago, so if you're not wearing a skirt, then you're breaking some taboo, some nonsense anyway. Um, for this part of the coloring, I definitely changed it up a bit, so I just uh, drew the outline of whatever big colored shape I was using and then use the freaking paint bucket to fill it in. But it did leave a bit of a, a weird halo, since it's a bitmap, not a vector, there's always some like pixel drop off around the edge of your brush, so I had to go and scribble around that borderline to make sure it was one solid color instead of having a weird artifact in it. Um, one thing that I will have to say about these designs is they're still pretty preliminary. They're not... Um, they're just testing ideas out, and they're definitely not ready for prime time. Um, mostly because of the concept of line mileage. That's one of the things I want, definitely wanted to talk about here, because for traditional hand-drawn animation, line mileage is kind of a big deal. It's a term used for if you took a drawing and took every line in it and laid it out straight end to end, how long would that line be? And the longer that line is, the longer it takes to draw that character. And if you've got to draw that character 12 or 24 times a second, it's going to be, that's a, a lot of time. And time is money, and that means you have a bigger budget for your character, for your movie, and it costs more to make. So that's why so many animated characters are simplified when there's really not a whole lot of detail drawn in. Um, anime gets around this by not having their characters move very much unless they're in a fight scene. That's why they'll be standing still and the only thing that'll be moving, for the most part, is their mouth. Um, so that's one way that you can kind of get around that line mileage problem when you have more complex characters. Um, but, for again, for example, like the, the one on the left, the, the blue dress, I'm going to have to go over that again and kind of simplify and streamline that design so that there's less wrinkles and wiggles and wiggly lines everywhere, making the line mileage go through the roof. Um, you can get a better idea here of those blue shadows that I was drawing on. It's in the same sort of layer, uh, multiply layer, and that solid blue color and the opacity drop down, but you can see the effect of it. So here's our... So here we go. Here's the end. Cheers, mate. Hope you guys enjoyed. Or at least learned something interesting. And have have yourselves have yourselves a lovely day. <laughs>